to order at 2.32 p.m. And we'll start with recon uh, recognition to begin with. So it's been a long time coming since what, it was October that you officially stepped off the board? Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> but we got them back, one way or another, we'll, we'll get them back. <laughs> So we've got, as is with tradition, um, departing board members, we like to provide a, a picture of recognition and thank you for, even though we've gone it all over, done it all over again, but again, we can't uh, thank Mr. Farmer enough for his 10 years of dedication to the Lynchburg Parking Authority Board and all the hard work that he's done and put forth and really advanced our parking programs that we still see today. So we have our beautiful downtown picture. Very nice. We especially like to present to you, sir, for everything you've done. It's a small token. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything and all your contributions to the Parking Authority. We really appreciate it. We hope to see you back more often. It was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. It was. Yeah, I'll come back and visit. And if you don't like me, you can blame him because he hired me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. Thank honestly. you, Dave. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So you're more than welcome to stay, or I want to stay for a little you bit. Want to stay? Okay, great. Well, actually, what we're going to jump into, uh, well, actually, we'll get to that. But the first was call to order. Um, second is our meeting minutes. We have to approve meeting minutes from our February 9th, 2020, 20, or 2021 board meeting. I just got off of vacation, so it's, I'm getting into the groove again. <laughs> Seconded. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, motion passes. Our next item is old business. So, and this is where you'll appreciate. We, uh, on March 23rd, 2020, 20, see, I can't do it, 2021, I took forth the recommendations from the Parking Authority to City Council on the changes to Division 3 of permit parking for ordinance revisions related to what we had been spending several months discussing. Uh, the discussion at Council went well. There were a lot of questions. There was no motion to approve the recommendation that the board put forth uh, in essence, there were all different questions that the council has asked for answers on. One of them is to make sure that we continue to have the caveat that the board has any type of public hearing related to rate increases that we would want to do. They want to see the grandfather clause for the existing rate. So if you recall, our original recommendation was that the permit parking on Church and Court Street, referred to as the as CCD, Church and Court Street District, we were going to eliminate the current $15 a year permit and turn it to the $25 monthly permit rate to be consistent with the rest of the parking permits for residential parking in the rest of the central business district. They felt that that area has still very much kind of spurred what we see today. It was a similar discussion as what we had a couple years ago when we tried to go and eliminate it as well. So they thought it was good to keep it, but the rate should probably be grandfathered in. That there should be that $15 per year, that's it. Um, my concern at the council meeting was if we do any keep that, you know, we have to do some type of maintaining of consistency. If you're gonna have a grandfather, then nobody else can do it. And that's it, and you know, we can move forward with what we're doing. So we're gonna see how that looks, changing the ordinance for that particular clause. And then because of our increase from $15 per year to a recommendation of $25 per year, council members felt, some council members felt that we should have a better description of the rate. There was discussion about equalizing the business rate, doing a market study to see what's out there and maybe if we're gonna keep residential low at 25, some members of council thought that the business rate should be brought down and that that should, similar to what discussions are happening right now with the tax rates being equalized, that's kind of bled over into the discussion about parking rates being equalized, that if we're not gonna raise residential rates, then the least we can do is lower the business rates because of everything that's happened with COVID and everybody trying to rebuild right now and reestablish their, their sense. There was no, uh, definitive answer on that, just that we should look at that and that should be something that we should do. I did mention to them that as part of 
ongoing efforts to be more in line with market values for the downtown that we will be doing a rate study in April, April, May. So this month I'll be reaching out to some independent assessors to establish that. That is part of our contractual obligation with the Holy Cross Church for our lease that we have with this uh, Clay Street parking deck. Every five years we have to do a reassessment. So we'll get that moving and we'll have a better idea what rates look like today versus the last rate was done in October of 2018. Uh, one council member questioned about real estates for taxes. Uh, not, not quite sure where that was going, but uh, I reached out to the assessor to kind of get an idea of, you know, ownership versus rental. And the city assessor told us that it's hard to determine. Uh, most units are owner occupied, but some are held in an LLC or a trust. But uh, there are currently 116 units, and the average assessment is $188,851, and the median assessed value is $170,000. So, again, I don't know where that was going in particular with that type of questioning, so I'll dig into that when I take this back to council to see exactly where that was. Uh, another question that was brought up that I need to survey businesses is who pays for employee parking? You know, and Mr. Warner, in your situation, you pay for your employees parking, but that question was kind of throughout council where, okay, who's paying for these business permits? Are they individuals or are they primarily businesses that are paying? So I'm in the works of pulling all that data and sending out a survey to see exactly who pays what. So we'll get that out. Um, the city engineering division contacted me and they wanted some changes done as well. They wanted a clear definition of outside the central business district because they felt that those purposes are very different. You know, we have outside central and then we got inside the central business district. So I'm going to meet with Matt Friedman, our deputy city attorney on Thursday. And we're gonna look at these questions. We're gonna look at some more of the comments that were made and retweak the ordinance to see where we go with it from there. Uh, there was a clarification question that, if you recall, Mr. Friedman brought up at our last meeting as far as the authority of the authority, meaning that the, by the charter, the council has given authority to set rates off street and everything that Mr. Friedman talked about at the last meeting. So that was uh, clarified again to council so that they understood that, you know, when we said we wanted to do the $25 off street rate, it's not different from what we're doing currently. We set the $50 rate, we set the off-street hourly rate, and the charter allows the Lynch Shore Parking Authority Board to do that. So not much discussion occurred after that, but we'll see where that goes at the next meeting. All in all, we got a little bit of work to do. I'll meet with Mr. Friedman on Thursday. We'll hash out more language according to what they asked about on the 23rd and bring it back to them maybe by the end of this month and see where we go from there. So, any questions on that? Questions, comments, concerns? No? Okay. Oh, and then once we get done, <laughs> once we finally wrap up this ordinance revision, we'll be moving to the next division. And I'll be working with Mr. Friedman at that point too to consolidate that and then once we have a definitive plan of what that looks like we'll bring it back to you guys to look at and approve that before it goes to council for approval too so still got some work to do on that front okay second in old businesses review of recommended changes to the permit parking policy for the department of parking management this policy was actually approved at the last meeting but there were a few questions uh, about visitor permits so what I did is I went back through this, or, uh, through this policy and hopefully cleared up some more of the language about visitor parking. And made that a little more clear. I rearranged some of the, how it read, so it read more clear. But mostly there were questions about making sure we had a definitive visitor parking piece in there, and as such, we have visitor parking permit fees are available only to residents within the CBD or CCD. Um, within the CBD, it's $15 per week or for a two week maximum. So that is a rate that by signing this policy, we would put into effect. The reason it's $15 per week 
is that it makes it cheaper than paying the daily rate at the meter, so it's an incentive to get a permit, put you where, where you're going to be in the permit parking area for the week, but it's also price point where if it's past two weeks, it's more cost effective than just to do, do a permit probably, since most of them are surface parking. So still an incentive, but we'll see how that pans out. Any questions on that? Because if uh, there is no questions, it w like I said, it was already approved, but we can definitely make a motion to approve the changes as is, and then the last thing to do is policy would be approved by the new chair. None? Where does it say $15? Page three at the very top. And then on page three where it says visitor parking, the part that residents outside the central business district get the two visitor passes for free as part of purchase of their visitor pass. So we got that little piece in there as well. We have a motion to approve the new changes that included the revisions of the visitor parking permit. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Mundy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There is none, so the motion passes. Thank you. Going to item number four, action or agenda items. We have an action item on the Agenda for a recommendation to elect a chairman, vice chairman, secretary, and treasury, treasurer as defined in the Articles of Incorporation of the Lynchburg Parking Authority, Article 6, members of the authority. So I attached the bylaws in here, well, not bylaws, but the articles in here for review again. And while I put this as it's defined in the articles, the secretary and treasurer, unless you all want to do it differently have generally been held by the parking manager. So secretary takes meeting minutes, notes. Um, I have already prepared those and provide those. Uh, as treasurer, I provide, I put together all the financials. But again, if, if anybody on the board feels that they want to hold that position and work with me on those financials and preparation of documents, I'm more than happy to relinquish that. <laughs> let, let somebody else work with that as well. But I have no problem holding, holding on to that too and still providing those every board meeting. So, back to you all. Is there a motion from the board to elect a chairman? I have a question. Sure. Since the authority is supposed to be the public and you're an employee, technically, can you be a member and be secretary treasurer? I mean, I think you should do all the duties, of course, but I'm just curious if y'all are gonna read this for just exactly how it's written, whether you're a member of the authority or whether. That would be a very good question for Mr. Friedman, our deputy attorney. I just know from how we've always done it that the parking manager just does secretary and treasurer duties and we've always we've always had Brandon who's here as our chairman. Did we ever have a vice chairman? Uh, we've had a vice chairman. We had but a we vice chairman. We've never technically had a secretary yeah. It does say uh, yeah. second treasurer need not be members of the authority. Oh, does it? Yeah, under uh, Article 6, Section 2. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Oh, okay. Good thing. I miss that. Good thing you read better than I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it was always difficult to deal with the financial systems within the city for 
external opinion. Yeah. It's difficult internally. <laughs> well, I make a motion that you that we nominate and put you appoint you as secretary treasurer. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any nays? Okay. Motion carries. David Malowitz, parking manager, will serve role as secretary and treasurer of the parking authority. Thank you. And do we have a motion for a, do we want to do, a, it's up to you. Now, like Mr. Farmer has pointed in the past, we didn't have a vice chair, but it does help in succession and moving in case anything does happen to the chair. Do we have a motion to entertain a nomination for a vice chair? I talked to Toby about that. She said she's often away, but I would like to nominate her. I don't think she's going all the time. <clears throat> I second that. You know, I'm not good with parliamentary procedure. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor? Aye. All of, any opposed? Being that there are no oppositions, all in favor wins. Toby Yeager is appointed as vice chairman of the Lynchburg Parking Authority Board. Yay. Job, yeah. Golfer clap. All right, as vice chairman then, I'm gonna. Vice chairwoman. Vice chairperson. Person. I'm going to nominate Dr. Mundy as chair. Okay, we have a nomination for Dr. Mundy as chairman of the board. Is there a second? I second that. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Being that there is none, Dr. Mundy is appointed as chairman of the Lynchburg Parking Authority Board. Yay! You, well, that is a huge milestone for us as we are officially seven members strong. It's been a long time since the board was seven members strong. We have a chair and a vice chair, so that is exciting news. Look what you get to see. Hey, all right. All right. <laughs> History in the making. Hey, Y'all take care. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. See you later. Okay, next on the agenda items is report from the parking manager. If you reference your board packet, you'll see I included the usual financial reports. The first page of that is the LPA board report for our fiscal year 2021 budget summary. We are looking pretty good. Um, better than I thought, being that this goes till the end of March, which leaves us three more months in our fiscal year ending June 30th. Um, I thought that we would be hit a little harder with COVID, um, but we didn't get hit as bad. I'm not going to say that we didn't take a hit. We did. We're beginning to see more of our monthly permits dwindle as businesses are reorganizing and realigning priorities. Um, I'll feel you. I can give you that number right here. Since the end of December, we have lost roughly $55,000 yeah, 55, in revenue from permits that we normally get. So for Midtown Deck, there was a business that was purchasing 24. They are, have renewed none of them. That business has moved. Another business in Midtown Deck ended 37 permits at the end of March. Um, over at the city center deck, we had, well, as you know, the old SunTrust Bank building was all vacated, so those two tenants represented 14 permits, and they are not coming back. And then down at the riverfront, there was a business that used to have 40 permits, and they have whittled it down to 19. So between all, all four of those, yeah, those one, two, three, four, four different businesses were at $55,000 that we usually get in yearly revenue. And that's a 200. If you look at the revenue sheet, you'll see that permit parking fees city owned. You know, that's last year we got $233,000 and there's 55,000 of it right there. So I kind of expected that. I was waiting to see what would happen. I know as some other businesses have their fiscal years beginning in January or beginning in October, I figured it would be this time that we'd start seeing that cut. And sure enough, that's where what we have so far. Hopefully that'll pick back up as business starts up again and we'll start seeing more folks looking for parking permits that we can fill that hole in. And then... 
Any other questions on the budget? I mean, you can see that if you look in our revenues, we're, we're down in every, every category right now. Hoping we can make up pay station fees now that we restarted Clay and Crossroads lot. So, moving on into the actual five year plans for the revenue, were there any questions, anything that stood out? Citation fine stood out for me. And that $12,185, you'll see that was consistent with last year. That comes in play for the taxes. So all of our delinquent citations get sent to the state for collections if they're not paid. And whatever folks have got outstanding parking tickets when they apply for their income, their, their tax returns, whatever they owe localities comes out first before they get their return. So, it's important that we get our stuff to the Billings and Collections Department and get it to the state soon because when you're at the higher on the list, you get your money faster. So that was a, a payout that came from the state for some delinquent citation fines. Other than that, any questions from the board on finances? Going into the end of the year, our reserve balance is looking very healthy uh, due to staffing and changes that occurred last fiscal year and cutting back on expenses and everything we had to do when COVID hit, we were able to put a substantial amount into our reserves for a total now of 198,275. My goal with the budget every year is to at least at minimum try to put 5% of our revenue back into the reserves. It doesn't always happen that way. I would love to be up at the 10%, but we run a tight ship. Our revenues closely match our expenses at this point. So while well, that's always my goal to do 5% and my lofty goal of 10%, I hope we can still continue to do 5%. And for our new board members that have joined us, the reserve fund balance is used to make capital improvement project purchases, uh, major equipment purchases, for instance, I have to prepare an RFP for our software system. So every five years, we have to rebid the parking management software system. Well, at the time that we did it five years ago, it was, a, it was around a $70,000, $80,000 expense. So that all came out of our reserve fund balance. Since we're not funded from the general fund, anything, technology purchases or special improvement projects that, that the board wants to do or that I see necessary in operations would come out of the the reserves, the pay stations, for instance, when we did the pay station implementation program back in 15, 16, and then again in 18, that was all that we took $50,000 out, almost, almost $60,000 out in 2018 to fund the pay stations for the riverfront project and some miscellaneous construction related items as part of that. So that's where all that money comes from. And once you all, again, for the new members, once you all approve the expend, expenditure of those items, then I take that back to the finance committee and get it approved in finance committee and then eventually go to council for an appropriations hearing before any of that money gets spent. All right. If there's no questions related to our financials, I'll just jump on down to, yeah. You might explain to them that at the end of June, because I see you have this note down here. Where? Uh, about uh, T. McCoy's salary, that at the end of the year, the numbers that we have will all end up to be different oh. because the city will do an allocation of city expenses uh, against our fund. Yes, thank you. So if you look at this board summary report with, with all of our line items, to uh, Ms. Yeager's point, internal service, other, other chart, wait, where is it? Other charges will be charged $40,348. The parking authority pays half of a salary for a public works employee to help perform maintenance functions on the parking facilities. 
So on June 30th, that other charges, while it's only $9,000 right now, it'll get added, uh, 40,000 will be added to that. And then also at the top and under notes, you'll see that there's the occurred accounting practices. So for 45 days after the end of the fiscal year of June 30th, the city pulls and does a curl to balance everything out for the end of the year. And we do see some differences in our revenues at that point. And then by that time, we'll have a definitive answer of what our assigned balance looks like. So usually by the August meeting and at latest the October, we have a firm, here's what your final balance sheet looks like. But this is, historically, this has been pretty close. Um, okay, second item on reports from the parking manager is two hour free parking at the riverfront lots. We are still doing that. We are seeing some interesting uh, parking habits that are going on down there. Uh, we, we are seeing people that are still want to park pay all day. Um, they don't, especially some of the businesses that are in that area, the employees don't want to have to do the two hour and move, two hour move. They'd rather just pay the $5 and be done with it for the whole entire day and just leave their car there. So we had had several calls from folks, hey, when are you going back to just regular? I just prefer to do regular. People are using the app to pay all day. So, it, and again, it just comes back to, I've asked uh, the enforcement staff to talk to patrons and say, hey, why are you doing it? And even out there, they're saying, well, it's just easier for me to pay all day. It's five bucks and I'm done. So folks really don't mind it. We have changed that parking habit from when we switched you know, over back in 2018 to have it paid and people like having that availability. Um, the CSX project that we had in the beginning of March closed off the free parking behind the railroad tracks. So during that time, you had those people that generally get the free parking come forward, and now there was a scramble for where can I park? So one of the business owners did contact me about getting parking permits for the week. Um, I had another business owner, same thing, they wanted temporary parking permits for the week so that they didn't have to move their car around and have to worry about the two hours. So. Uh, people appreciated the free at the time <laughs> when it wasn't there, but also in calling and asking me about what to do, I explained how the parking rules work and had these, I mean, basically, had this been a normal operation, I would have just told the business owners to pay the meter and they would have been fine. And, that, you know, they said that wouldn't have been an issue, but because the meters weren't operational, we have two hour, that kind of created a problem for where to put people, how to get people allocated. So, um, the PEOs have also said that it's been very difficult to keep up with enforcement on foot with those additional two hour parking spaces. It's just become a whole new animal down on Jefferson Street trying to maintain all of Jefferson Street, Mosaic Lot, Riverfront Lot, and the Depot Lot. So they've came to me and said, Dave, it's, it's a lot. It, it takes a lot to be able to get down there and get those folks and still be able to get up and mark and get back in the appropriate time. So it's been a struggle for them as well. So I don't know how much longer, that was one of the discussion items today I had for you all to think about, is how much longer we really wanna keep all that in place. If that's something that you guys want to think about for these next two months and bring, and bring back a recommendation of what we should do in June, or if, uh, if you have ideas that you want me to look into, if there's more information that you want about the program, if you would like me to provide a memo of current operations and some suggestions and ideas with pros, cons, I'd be more than happy to do that as well for you all to review. And then in the June meeting, we can reevaluate and make a decision whether or not we're going to convert and start running normal operations like we did pre-COVID and make an effective date of like July 1 or sometime after July. If we did July 1, it would coincide with the new fiscal year. So wanted to bring that all up of what's kind of happening and if you guys want me to i'll be more than happy to put together a brief report that just says what's going on the facts it's having and some recommendations sounds good to me I... report okay and then we can bring it to discussion and, uh, at the june you'll, meeting you'll talk with i guess dave and pool and Whomever yep. is that down in his area? Yep, you got Dave Poole um, and then Billy McBratney and some of the other businesses in there, and then Dave Henderson as well. Yeah. Um, talk with him, and I'll t I usually talk with Amazement Square too, and I usually touch base with Kim Sorensen at the Riverview's Art Space. Those are kind of my four. Okay. Yeah, those are usually who I bring up to. Um, 
And then I'll bring it up to, I can send something out to Consensus Stephanie and kind of get a idea from those businesses at the old Pride of Virginia building. See what they say. And I can bring back that information to the board on the June meeting and we can all talk about it and go from there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. One, uh, and then why we're on this, one of the topics that one of the, Penny and I have been working very diligently about is validations for businesses. And I had a great conversation with Ashley Kirshner, the executive director of the Downtown Lynchburg Association, and Susan Brown a few weeks back. And we just kind of talked parking, what, what's going on, what's happening. And one of the things that they brought up was, you know, getting this parking validation for businesses on our website. So instead of doing hang tag permits, the machines have the capability and so does the app to do a validation code. And what that means is if Mr. Warner wanted to set up a validation code for his business, if he has clients and customers coming in and just wants to pay their parking, we would set that code up, provide Mr. Warner with that code. His customers would come in, park at the mosaic lot, and they would go up to the pay station and then they punch in their code and then it would be for however much time he wanted to pay. Say you only wanted to do two hour validation. Well then we could program it for a two hour validation or if you wanted to do it for an all day. And then at the end of the month, we would run a report that shows how many times that validation was used, how much that was worth, and then Mr. Warner would be sent an invoice to pay from at that point. But that provides an easy way for customers, clients, to be able to park for free, on, not for free, but they can park without having to pay that the business has said will we'll cover this expense, and then that business just gets charged each month. So we've already got three businesses that have started doing it and we called and did some training so we can get up to speed on making sure we're doing it right and correct and then once we got a better handle on it we're going to work with DLA and get that out into the business community and let them know so folks like Dave Henderson who came during the CSS CSX project and said what do I do we could have easily just programmed in a validation code for that week and said here you go he could have given it to his employees or whomever to use and then at the end of that it, we would just end the validation and build him for whatever he used instead of having to figure out parking permits and you know that was Dave's big complaint is he said you know I got 20 employees so but they're all coming at different shifts and times so giving me permits to train to say yeah, I bought four permits he goes and I got to switch those around between 20 employees it just doesn't always work well on his end so I think he would be in favor of this as well. But that's what we're working towards is getting that more under control and working with the DLA so we can get that out to the business community so that they know that there's that validation program if they want to participate in it. I saw that thing when I parked over here at Midtown for the code. Yes, yep, sorry. So yeah. is that the idea that you would give the code out to your employees or you would use the app and have your employees come in and say what parking place they were in or your customer and then they would they would do it on their cell phone I they mean, they could if they hadn't paid for parking yet it's up to the business how they want to disseminate that information say they want to post it on their facebook page or whatever social media they use hey we're having i mean we could even dial it down to a sale event Hey, we're having a flash sale this week. You know, come on down to the Midtown parking deck, put in code 123 and get two hours of free parking. That's something we could do. But yeah, they, they would have to have to figure out how to get that to their, their people. Yeah. And how it wouldn't be abused. That's a big piece to it. We're gonna create a um, agreement that businesses have to sign to say, hey, you know, you're because I have had that happen in the past where and I caution businesses that go into it. I say, hey, there's no way that we, there's no way that we parking can control who gets that permit. You can, we guarantee we're not giving it out, but employees tend to give it out to friends and family and whoever they want to give it out to. So, you know, there might be times where your bill could be high. And I've seen that happen where I run an invoice for a business and mail it to them. They call me and they're like, this is double what I paid last month. Yup, I think you got some folks that are giving that out. And then the businesses have had to talk to employees and then that came back down again. So it's definitely, a, I caution it. I think it's a great tool, but I also say, hey, you just need to be aware that, you know, let your employees know, treat it with respect and use it appropriately. It could be. I mean, is that what you're building the business that's using the validation or 
they could be billed for, it's whatever they want. So say they only want to give two hours of parking, then it would be 25 cents for the first hour and a dollar for the second hour. So it would only be a dollar 25. Does the software package support more traditional validation where uh, the person parks, they do it in the app as normal, I'm in space 23, they go shop somewhere and say, oh, we'll validate your parking, and then the business can opt to take over that charge? No, because that's usually in a controlled parking environment with a gated system where they can give them, like, there's different methods to do that, like a chaser ticket. So say you went into a parking deck and you pulled a time ticket to get in. And then you went shopping and they said, oh, did you park in the Midtown parking? Like, yeah, I parked. Well, let us pay for two hours. So they have what's called these chaser yeah, tickets. The app yeah. allowed, allowed the business to assume the charge rather than the person being charged for it. Okay, there's no way yeah. we could do that after they parked because they've already paid for it. So that's where they have to work to get it out to the community to let their customer base know. And, and I would agree that the, the website and, and communication in general could you would certainly use improvements to your point as because yeah. I, I spoke to you about this before. I didn't know this is an option I was I was signing up and I think that's be a useful you know program to have. Yep. And that's what we're Penny is diligently Penny Campbell, you've met her, she's our new administrative assistant. She's working right now on redoing the website, adding new language, condensing it, just making it look better to be easier to read, to get that information out of because yeah we like you and I've talked about, it's definitely a deficiency and part of our long-term plan for the comprehensive work plan. So we, we know that's there and Penny is working really good at getting that, that cleaned up a lot. I think it's a good idea too because earlier the business had sort of felt that maybe we weren't being attentive to them. And we are, and we recognize that they're a very valuable part of what we're trying to do. So mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Cool, thank you. Is to let people know that it's easy for you to change their code if they're worried about if, if they have concerns about people using it inappropriately they can just contact the authority and then you can reset yeah. it yeah we can stop it we can yeah. reset it we can change it absolutely good point any other Oops, somebody's beeping. Next on the list was Jefferson Street Lot and completion of the water resources project. So this is that ongoing project that started last year. It's called the CSO at Piedmont Lofts. That project ends in July. So something else that we're going to need to look at at the June meeting is what we're going to do with the Jefferson Street Lot. And if we wanted to continue with the goals of creating paid parking in that lot. If you recall, well, Toby and Thorne and Dr. Mundy, you guys probably remember when this all started. That, gosh, was it? End of 2018, there was a decision to put paid parking in that lot and it was pushed off because of the anticipation of this project and that the lot would be taken up for it. And then that project just got, kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed and now finally it happened and we're back to the discussion if we're gonna continue to do paid parking. Uh, residents have, contacted and said that they would be willing to pay for permits if they were designated spaces, like what we have in the riverfront lot where we have hourly paid parking in the center and then all along the perimeter is designated permit parking only. So I have had uh, several residents contact me and say, you know, we would participate in a permit program if that lot was all permit so that they don't have to worry about moving their car every two hours on Jefferson Street. Um, I have not reached out to the bike shop owner or those gentlemen, or I think there's somebody else in there to talk to them as well. But, you know, looking for advice from you all if you want to continue. Is that something in June that we want to look at as well and move forward with a discussion to turn the Jefferson Street lot into paid parking or content with continuing on with it still being free? I mean, it's the same concept. I mean, the. I was I was thinking if we do it like the riverfront, we would make the 
the front part of the lot, permit only, the part that faces the um, faces Jefferson Street. If you go down there currently, we've got, if you come into that parking lot and make a left, you've got two handicapped spaces. And then right now we have five sign permit parking only signs, but we could make that whole row a permit parking only and then put a pay station in there and make the back row a paid hourly parking area. So. Yeah, I don't know how many, I don't, I don't have any concept of how many permit parking places we would need. I guess, and I guess you could see what your, um, the appetite for the residential or the, what the businesses down there have mm -hmm. to say. I guess you just need to talk to them first. And how many parking places are in there? I know you're asking that. I don't know off the top uh, of my head. Let It's not listed on the. It's not. Twenty something is what I want to say. I would think that one would be heavily used by the by visitors, by tourists. Um, so I don't know how many permit spots you'd want versus paid parking, but I'm sure you'll come up with an excellent recommendation. <laughs> yeah, because uh, future plans also call for that and to have the playground. That's, as far as I know, that's still happening. The Kiwanis sponsored playground that's gonna go in at that end of the lot. So you have more families coming down there to enjoy that as well. Are you planning to reach out to some of the businesses? Yeah. I can do exactly. I'll just do a whole package then for June. We'll talk about the two-hour. I'll put all that together. I'll get with those businesses in that area. I'll talk to the businesses in the Jefferson Street area, and we'll just kind of split that for, for you all to review at the June meeting. And then uh, lastly, under current projects, we kind of touched base on a few of them already. Uh, Penny and I are working at trying to hit some of the areas that we need improvements on. You know, like as I said, Penny working heavily on the website, getting that updated. We're redoing brochures for some of the residential parking permit stuff. We've got the parking enhancement technology program in full swing. I've provided data to the software company to get that up and going so we can hopefully see that in the next four to six weeks. Um, Staffing, just making sure we're, we're hitting everything. April 19th is slated to open City Hall, so we shall see if that date is still going to happen, but we'll be ready for that if that goes. And other than that, it's just been, you know, we're kind of hitting them as they come along. Um, another big one for us, I've heard, I don't know if it's when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, but hopefully we'll have Court Street repainted in the next couple of months. That's been a complaint from residents and businesses up there that there's no lines on Court Street, so it kind of becomes a crazy free-for-all. So Public Works has said that they'll look into getting that done and get that quoted. So that's been some, that was actually one of the striking things on my list too. The Midtown parking deck that Toby brought up, gonna work with the contractor on getting them in sooner now that, to get that top level finished and restriped. It's, uh, I wish we could have got it done with, the, with our plan on 900 block and with the redo of the driveway, but that didn't happen. So we'll move on. Any questions on projects or things that are happening? Quick question. You said 419, is that just for staff to come back in? The city hall's not actually gonna open on 419, yeah. is it? Um, I don't think it's gonna open open, but yeah, staff's supposed to be due back. Yeah. Staff's slowly coming back, so yay. <laughs> Starting to see people again. Okay. Any, I have no new business. Did anybody on the board have any new business to bring up? I have a question about, um, yeah. is there any movement toward making it easier to purchase permits, being, you know, through a form on the website or uh, online payments or things like that? Because right now it's, 
takes a lot of back and forth paperwork and checks and stuff to get a permit. And I'm sure you, you know, it'd be much easier to uh, get people to purchase permits if there was less friction to do so. But that depends on what type of permit you're purchasing. So we've got the individual permits and then we've got the third party permits. And third parties, and that's for what's a business that has multiple permits that it's buying individually, that currently is not an option that software company offers. So we, I, I, I gotta work with them and see if we can't get that to work. I know what you're talking about and I, Penny and I were just talking about that today and how we're going to, because she's being, she being new to the system, she's starting to see some things that hasn't, haven't been seen in a while. So we're gonna try to set up another appointment with the software company, but yeah, we're, we are restricted in what that company can offer us in that online platform. Yeah, and I know we, it was approved at a few meetings ago about ACH debit and getting that in there. I think that would work for third parties because then they can just contact their bank and just use the bank account to ACH auto debit every month to pay that invoice. But yeah, I, I don't know, I gotta look into that some more. Okay. I'm on board with you, yep. Anything else? Dave? Marple? The signage, Midtown signage, is that part of the paper? I got a sign list. Yep, as part of the new technology enhancements that we're doing, I got to redo all the signs. So I got a list going to get with the sign shop guys on to see how we're going to get all those completed. Height signs are one of them. Mm -hmm. and then the Payment the signs. The walkway in front of Depot. We are ordering them. I just gotta find some way to put them in. <laughs> but yes, we are ordering them, we're getting those in. Uh, if you're, what he's referencing is that down by Depot, there's a small pedestrian walkway between the parking spaces. And we took out, when we redid the lot and repaved it, we removed the concrete parking stops because they were just all crumbled and rebar was sticking up. And so we just got rid of them completely. Well, what's happened is people now just park over the, the, the walkway and it's very difficult for for people to sometimes walk through there because they just completely block it. So um, I'm gonna order, I have on order these, they're, they're nice rubber ones. So we can put those in there and get those down. They got the yellow stripe on them. You've probably seen them around. I like them a lot better than concrete. One of the problems we had with the concrete is they just, they got hit by the plow, so they crack. You know, other people hit them, they crack. With these nice rubber ones, they don't damage as easily. So they'll stay in there, and even if they do get hit by a plow, they generally don't break in half, they'll like pop up, so it'll be easier just to go back in with another installation piece and put it back down. So we're, we're gonna get those in there, and I just gotta find out who's gonna get them in there. <laughs> and I know we tabled the discussion about the scooters, but I haven't seen them parking in there at all anymore, so I'm guessing they've just been standing there. Yeah, they're standing there. Using that as a place? Um, after we had the discussion here, I worked with Gay Now, who that's where the permit is through that company, and they contacted the owner. And they get, well, not the owner, but the guy that's running the program. Mm -hmm. And no, they've, I've got some, some pictures of them in there, but we haven't seen them stored in there like we did at that time. It could have just been related to the storm, but irregardless, it's, it's not a storage facility, so. Well, I didn't mind them being there. We had that discussion. We didn't mind yeah. them. It was a good location. I just thought it needed to be a dedicated spot that the yeah. scooter company pays for a spot there and we sign it or something, yep. you know, like everybody else does for parking. Yep. So anyway. Well, that's coming back. I'm just uh, keeping tally of what's going on and, you know, parking enforcement staff's taking pictures and I've got a file that I keep of where they are and issues in parking lots so that when the council reviews this whole thing, we'll bring that to their attention. And at that time, we'll have advance notice and we can bring it here. And then what I can do is put together a memo to city council based on whatever you all feel that you wanna put in there and have that addressed to council, so. All right, um, we'll jump to comments. Let's see if there is anything. It really helped to bring us up to date, or bring me up to date at least. You're welcome. We've got no comments from the public. Let me email then.
said anything. Okay, so in the few minutes that we have, it's 322. I'll just, so my, just so I'm clear and making sure I got the correct orders is for the next meeting, I'm gonna work on preparing a memo with recommendations for how we should move forward with operating or changing operations at the Riverfront Mosaic and Depot lot and then also work at operation changes for the Jefferson Street lot, garner some input from the local businesses down in that area, and then provide that in the June meeting and we'll kind of focus on that at that time, looking through what's what and whether or not we're going to make any changes for July 1. Does that sum it up or did I miss anything? Sums it up? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I have, unless there's any other questions that you have for me about any parking business or anything you've been hearing, good, bad, and different. Nothing? Well, welcome new chairman, Dr. Mundy, and chairperson, Ms. Jaeger. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys taking on the mantle. And give me a call or let me know if you have any questions. In the meantime, I'm always available. I will adjourn the meeting today at 324.